I believe it's about time to begin. It's my pleasure to welcome Professor B. Stanley Pons from the University of Utah, a person who has uh, rapidly become a household word and I think has created a, a stir in the scientific community like I have never seen before. I think that's evidenced uh, by the fact that we have uh, once again been able to fill this auditorium for a colloquium. Although uh, Professor Pons is, is well known, uh, perhaps some of his background is not, and I'd like to take just a couple of minutes uh, to brief you on that. He graduated from Wake Forest University in North Carolina in uh, 1965 with his bachelor's degree. He continued his uh, education at the University of Michigan, but after two years interrupted it to uh, work in a family business for a period of about eight years. Returning uh, to his education, in 1976, he worked with uh, Professor Fleischmann at the University of Southampton in England, where he received his PhD in 1978. He uh, joined the chemistry department at Oakland University uh, at that time. Uh, subsequently, after a two-year period, he went to the University of Alberta. And in 1983, he joined the chemistry department at the University of Utah. In 1988, he became uh, chairman of that department. With pleasure, I want to uh, welcome him here. Thanks very much for this very kind introduction. Um, before I left yesterday, the dean of my college said that uh, he remains amazed at what it takes, what an electrochemist has to do today to get an imitation to Los Alamos. <laughs> so he said, you, st you still know how to attract attention, he said. So. But thank you very much for the invitation to come down. Uh, a little bit of a history, uh, Professor Fleischmann, who was uh, uh, at Southampton when I uh, got my PhD with Alan Buick, uh, told us of some uh, results he had seen in sep for separation factors of uh, deuterium and hydrogen in metal lattices, particularly in palladium. And those results seemed very strange to a number of people for some time. Uh, in Utah some 10 years or eight years later or so, we uh, were collaborating on other things. And in the context of, of trying to make metallic hydrogen, that was uh, something that uh, I, I had been interested in for some time, uh, trying to look for ways to do that. Uh, we discussed in, uh, the possibility of, of doing this in metal lattices because of the very large high pressures or high apparent pressures that you could derive in these metal lattices. Uh, so these alternate methods of, of gaining high compression or high uh, uh, pressures in lattices then uh, led to a simple calculation and that uh, if you considered the raising of the chemical potential of a substance inside a metal lattice just on the basis of the potential difference that you measure uh, in certain metal lattices, uh, if, you, if you take that calculation, it, it showed that you could uh, indeed achieve astronomically high pressures if you were to try to do it by hydrostatic means. It's the same sort of situation that one has to consider when you consider how do you, how do you prepare sodium and chlorine gas from, its, uh, from, from ordinary salt? How do you uh, change this into its uh, elements if you don't use electrochemistry? Well, electrochemistry uh, in electrochemistry is trivial. You take uh, the molten salt and you uh, apply, use platinum electrodes and you can certainly derive sodium and, and chlorine. To do that by any other process, by any other physical or chemical process is extremely difficult. You could not do it at, uh, to any a significant extent. So the point here is that, is that the lesson we learn is that the energy in, 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 in some electrochemical experiments, you put the energy where the energy is needed. So anyway, these sorts of pressure equivalents uh, that we were calculating immediately led to the, the thought that there must be more interesting reactions uh, that we could look at other than metallic hydrogen. And indeed, we uh, considered the possibility of fusion of, like uh, fusion of like nuclei in these metal lattices, specifically uh, deuterons. So we d designed a rather far-fetched experiment, and that was hanging a cube of uh, 
palladium into a large volume of D2O electrolyte for some months. We got a negative result. We then uh, made some modifications to the uh, electrode. We changed the current density sharply, and then a few hours later, uh, we discovered that the uh, that the uh, cube had uh, um, vaporized and vaporized most of the equipment around it. So let me show, so from then on we decided to change the experiment, which we did. We started over at a very small, a very low level, and for the next five years uh, tried to be a little bit more careful. And uh, the reaction then which we're considering, if I could have the first, first slide. Okay, the uh, cell that we're talking about uh, is this, is it properly focused? Probably change it here. The uh, cell is a palladium rod, uh, which is the center portion here, which is immersed in a D2O uh, lithium deuteroxide electrolyte. We, uh, we have a temperature measuring device inside. This is a, a calibrated thermistor. Uh, you have a, a tube for injecting and replacing the uh, D2O that uh, is electrolyzed out. You have a, a simple resistance heater so that we can do Newton's law of cooling curves or uh, the heat uh, uh, coefficient, heating coefficient uh, measurements by uh, injecting a known current and a known voltage uh, through in, into this uh, device. Uh, and we have a secondary electrode, which, or uh, auxiliary electrode, which are these horizontal lines, which is platinum wire wrapped around a glass basket, which uh, totally surrounds the electrode. You then have a, a cell. Uh, the, the external portion of the cell, which is all glass, uh, can either be an evacuated doer, if you're looking for very small heat changes, uh, an evacuated doer uh, is, is best. If you're looking at medium heat changes on the order of a tenth of a degree or, or a degree, uh, then you can uh, uh, just use a cell that's not evacuated. And if you're looking at very high temperatures uh, on some of the larger electrodes, uh, then we would just use a single wall cell in order to uh, increase the uh, heat flux through the, uh, through the device so we can make a more rapid uh, measurement. Uh, and let's see, the, the, uh, the whole thing is mounted in a, a Kellef plug uh, at the top. All that's sealed with parafilm, so there's only one uh, avenue of escape for gas, and that's through this fill tube. And all of this is mounted in another uh, Kellef tube in the, in the bottom of the cell. So it's quite a simple, uh, quite a simple cell. The, this is the Utah U1 Tokamak. Uh, <laughs> We couldn't use we couldn't use the cooling baths you have here, so we used a rubber made. It was considerably cheaper <laughs> in those days. But in any case, the entire this is a photograph of the cell, uh, and the only elect the main power connection is, is from a potentiostat then that goes into uh, to the anode and cathode, uh, and uh, that is mounted externally into a, a fairly large, uh, highly. Uh, temperature, uh, temperature bath that uh, has temperature that's uh, controlled to within a hundredth of a degree. Uh, and then the thermal measurements are measured like this. Radiation measurements are made uh, by putting this cell into uh, an appropriate spectrometer or device or withdrawing material from similar cells and, inje inje and injecting them, uh, the samples into uh, other spectrometers, scintillation counters and things like that. Well, the reaction we're, we uh, discuss here is the reaction of uh, the generation of deuterium uh, by electrochemical reduction at the palladium electrode. Uh, the first reaction uh, res is generally accepted to be the first step in, in uh, the actual mechanism, and that is the adsorption of D atoms on the surface of a metal. Uh, this is the same mechanism that you would see at a platinum electrode or any noble, uh, or at uh, electrodes where you uh, have uh, adsorption of hydrogen. You then have diffusion. Uh, not migration, but diffusion of the adsorbed atoms into the lattice. This is the strange phenomenon which separates palladium and some other metals fr from all the others. And then you have any number of competing reactions. This reaction is thought to be the uh, mechanistic step in, in our system. Uh, there are certain other recombination reactions that might be considered. So the overall reaction or the overall uh, chemical potential of deuterium in the lattice must be determined by the relative rates of these two, uh, of the first and the third reaction. 